Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love, reading Joshua 7, Joshua 8, not the whole chapters, just a few excerpts. I'll let you know what we're reading once I start. But the thing I want to share with you is the difference between these two chapters happens to be the difference between victory and defeat, or shall I say defeat and victory. And the point of the two chapters is disobedience, going against God, doing things your way, knowing it's diametrically opposed to God's, brings on defeat. No matter how much you slip and slide, peep and hide, and and, and stash your little secrets in the back in the corner in the dark, it's all broad daylight to God. He can see every dot and tittle. <laughs> That's an inside joke, y'all. Just, just go with it. So what I want you to think about is in Joshua 8, there was a rectification that took that took place. There was a quick adjustment and that brought on victory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read part of Joshua chapter 7. And I want you to hear the contrast of the two. Starting at verse 1. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi and the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah took of the accursed thing and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Bethaven in the east side of Bethel and spake unto them saying, go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed the country. Now, just to make it clear, Joshua had no idea what was going on with Achan. Now, and they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Ah, oh, let not all the people go up, but about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but a few. So there went up thither of the people about three thousand, and they fled before the men of Ai. Pat's two cents. Oh, no! Verse 5. And the men of Ai smote of them about thirty and six men, for they chased them from before the gate even unto Sherebon and smote them in the going down, whereof the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord unto eventide, he and the elders of Israel, and put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side, Jordan. Oh, Lord, what shall I say when Israel turned their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall environ us around and cut off, and cut off our name from the earth. And what wilt thou do unto thy great name? And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? In other words, get your behind up off the ground and quit crying the blues. What are you doing down there anyway? And this is God's continued response to Joshua. Israel has sinned. And they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen and dissembled also. And they have put it even among their own stuff. Now, I'm not going any further with this. But he gets the people, they gather together. He sends the, the folks, you know, uh, uh, Joshua sends certain men to go to his tent. And they bury, they call him out, and he finally confesses that he, he took the Babylonian garment and all his good stuff and 
Bam, he stuck it up under his tent and buried it under all his stuff. And his family knew about it, so they were all in on the secret. And God called him out, and boy, oh boy, I'm telling you, that was the end of AI. I mean, of uh, that was the end of Achan and his family. But the reason Israel, and you got to listen to this because this is key. The reason Israel lost the battle to Ai was because of one man's sin. One, only one. Now, imagine this. We are the body of Christ. Picture that. We are the body of Christ. And we're in the last days on top of it. Can you imagine how many people in the body of Christ are out there committing little hideaway sins, little secret sins, little peekaboo sins? Mm -hmm. In the back, in the corner, in the dark, telling little white lies, little red lies, little polka dot lies. And they're sitting there thinking because nobody knows they're getting away with murder. And you wonder why the body of Christ worldwide tends to be so weak and impotent when it comes to the miraculous powers of God, when it comes to deliverance, victory, power, strength, all kind of stuff. Like, what's wrong with the body of Christ? Why do we come up looking like we're limping through life? What's up with that? When God looks at one, he looks at the whole. Think about how he described it. He didn't say Achan has sinned. He didn't tell Joshua that. Joshua had no idea what Achan did. That's why he was crying the blues so bad. Seemed like God was lying. Some of y'all think God's lying. Some of y'all think God is a liar. Because the promises are in the Bible. But for some reason, so many people are not experiencing those promises. And we wonder why. Well, here is a key right here. And this should make each and every one of us examine ourselves to see if we're really living a holy life or if we're just playing church. Because God counted the sin that Achan committed by himself. His family wasn't committing the sin with him, but his family got destroyed with him. Think about it. He got removed off the scene. And it wasn't until they got rid of all the crap that when they asked the Lord again, now can we go up and get a victory? God said, go, I'm with you. That's in Joshua chapter 8. And therein lies the victory because they not only confessed and obeyed, but they also got rid of every inkling of the sin that one man had committed because that one man caused them a defeat. So think of all the people around this globe that call themselves born again Christians that are allowing little pet sins, baby sins, little insignificant, so to speak, sins. But they're not insignificant to God. And what these little insignificant things do is they cause the whole body of Christ to limp through life instead of live as victoriously as we are supposed to live. We are to live miraculous lives 24-7. But there are too many little teeny weeny sins sprinkled all over this planet. And it weakens the whole system of things for the body of Christ. Think about that. All right. Now, let's move on. We're going to go to, because I want you to hear the contrast. Joshua chapter 8. Joshua chapter 8, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not, 
neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of war with thee. Arise, go up to Ai. See, I have given unto thy hand the king of Ai and his people and his city and his land. And thou shalt do to Ai and her king as thou didst unto Jericho and her king, only the spoil thereof and the cattle thereof shall ye take for prey unto yourselves. Lay thee an ambush for the city behind it. Now, the bottom line is to make the story quick. They won the victory. But understand the power of one person's sin. Think of that. Understand it. Some of you have witchcraft. Uh, let me see, how can I call it? Uh, witchcraft artifacts that you bought from other countries and you brought them into this country, put them in your house as a wall decoration, as, a, as something to, to decorate your table or, or embellish whatever other decorations you already have certain types of jewelry you have and you don't realize that they have emblems of the of that particular region's gods and idols right there on the images and you brought that into your house that's what god refers to as the accursed thing many of you have no idea the things that you have in your homes and you wonder, why is hell breaking loose? Why is your family so dysfunctional? Why is there so much mess going on? Because you have brought the Babylonian garment into your house via idol worship, whether they are I idols themselves and you don't know it. See, ignorance is not an excuse, even in the American law. They say ignorance is not going to get you off, baby. That's not going to do it for you. If you break the law, you break the law. Well, trust me, baby, this is with God the same way. See, he does count. He does give mercy for folks who really don't know. He's more merciful than, than our people's law. But you have to understand that one thing you cannot do is expect God to cohabit with your sins. Now, this is a year that could be filled with blessings for you. It really could. In spite of all the craziness going on, you could choose the route that God chooses to bless. Or you can go with the population, with the general population, and you can go the route where all hell is breaking loose. You that, That's your choice. But it depends on the little choices you make, not just the big ones. You're not going to the dope house to buy some crack or heroin so you can shoot up. No, you're not doing that. You're not out there prostituting your body. But what are the little things you're ignoring, you're turning a blind eye to? Because, oh, that's, that's, that's pretty. There's nothing wrong with that. You better consult with God before you bring anything into your house. You better consult with God before you participate with your buddies at your friend's house where they may want you to play the Ouija board with them. Or they may want you to sit with them as they do candle seances. They may want you to play levitation games with them. Oh, we're just playing. Doesn't matter. Anytime you touch the unclean thing, you ain't playing, baby. And neither is God. I'm going to leave that right there on the table for you to think about. Chew on that for a while. Or as our old friends used to say when we were kids, sit on that and rotate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So you have to know that God doesn't play. Even when you think it's a play thing, God is not playing. This stuff is serious to God. You don't allow people to bring their little paraphernalia from the little wicker stores? No. You don't play with crystals? 
crystals will jack your mind up. You won't know your name if you saw the neon lights. Mm, you don't realize how that stuff can mess with you. There are a lot of little things out here that you need to keep your hands off of because they open doors to portals. We're not talking about angels from heaven. So you have to be careful the choices you make. The little things, you know, it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. So some of the smallest, most insignificant, seemingly insignificant uh, details can be the biggest atom bombs in your household. Be very careful. That's all I want to say. We're in a new year now. Old things should be passed away. Behold, all things should be becoming new. And we don't want to renew or replay some of the cursed things that we dabbled in before. We need to renounce it, let it go, and get rid of everything. Every, every <laughs> I got to say it, Lynn, every dot and tittle. I know it doesn't apply, but you know, it's just a little joke. But we have to get rid of every crumb. We've got to get rid of every tentacle, everything. <clears throat> that associates itself with the dark side. Even your tendency to want to watch magic movies, witchcraft movies, movies with warlocks and all kinds of spells and incantations, and all that fascinating fantasy. No, cut that crap loose. Because as soon as you turn on, you've opened a portal. Be careful. This year can be determined by the any year can be determined by the choices you make. And I ask you, what are you going to choose, baby? God bless you with a beautiful year and the best choices you can possibly make. May God bless you with victory and supernatural divine protection, divine warning, divine favor. May God bless you with good health, prosperity, all kind of goodies in your life. Healing, inner healing and physical healing. Deliverance from all strongholds. In the name of Jesus, may God keep all evil as far away from you as the east is from the west. And may God keep you from all evil as far as the east is from the west. In Jesus' name, God bless you. And God bless this year, 2023. Amen.